So what if there was a button that you could press and instantly improve 40% of your life? How fast would you smash this thing? This button actually does exist. It's your habits. And that's why in this video, we're going big. Because you've heard the usual advice, drink more water, get up early, and that can help. But I want to talk about the four key areas of your life, mind, body, spirits, and money, and give you my favorite personal habit that made the biggest improvement for each. Let's go. This one literally scares me out of my seat. So the Mayo Clinic analyzed 13 different studies on physical activity. They found that if you sit more than eight hours a day with no physical activity, have the same risk factors as those who are obese or smoke. To my understanding, it's not necessarily the hours you move, but it's the hours you're out of your seats that matter. And so two things that I did, if you wanna copy it, go for it. The first, I got a walking pad. It's what I'm on right now. I absolutely love this thing. I am beating myself up. I didn't buy it sooner. Mostly because it's 115 in Arizona right now. If I go walking outside, I will come back looking like a dehydrated tomato. But also, I'm getting 10,000 steps daily watching my favorite show, Survivor. Seeing the triple idle play backstab blindside while I'm getting 12,000 steps. If you want this exact walking pad, I love it. I'll link it down below where I got it on Amazon. Nothing kills the vibe more than things that look like exercise equipment. So I love the wood grain on this one. The second is a standing desk. When I compare the days that I stand more versus the days that I don't, it's amazing how much more productive and how much I feel better on the days where I am standing for a couple hours. I try to have a rule that if I work eight hours a day, half the day, I'm standing up for it. Finding movement that doesn't feel like work or you have a ton of resistance towards, I think that's the best tip to reduce the sedentary lifestyle. It breaks my heart because a lot of people have the belief, well, I can't invest money because I don't have money. And that seems true but it's completely backwards. We often don't have money because we're not investing. Now, this is not official financial advice. I'm not qualified to give that. Everyone on YouTube is, chances are not qualified to give that. So check with a professional. But what we're talking about here is extremely conservative, okay? And this principle is the biggest piece of financial knowledge that if you develop, will make you tons of money. This is the core principle of compounding here and starting early with what you got. If you put $100 in every month for 30 years at 10% return, that's gonna be $206,000. Your principal invested 36,000, your interest gained $170,000. And that's just $100 a month. That's 1,200 a year. We probably spend that on one-click Amazon purchases, like my habit button here. To be clear, I'm not saying you have to penny pinch your way through life. What I am saying is starting early, you can take advantage of compounding. And there's this big debate between get rich quick, like build a business, get into crypto, do NFTs, or whatever the latest thing is, and then more conservative approaches, which get labeled get rich slow. Young people think they have to do either or. My solution has always been to do both. I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs I've seen behind the the scenes where they have eight years of great growth they think it's gonna last forever and then boom out of nowhere they get sick or business shuts down it's not as good anymore and they don't have a safety net to fall back on I know finances can be really intimidating so I'll link right here a perfect follow-up if you're interested in this and going deeper I read somewhere that the average person checks their phone 96 times a day. Look, I love shorts as much as the next person, but there is something I've noticed the last four years since they came out to where if I'm using it a bunch, I feel more scattered. I don't feel as locked in and present. And I didn't have that when I consumed a lot of long form content. I had a point where I couldn't even take a without my phone, it was so bad. Just keeping it real. I think of those dystopian cartoons where someone's eyes are peeled open and they're just watching a screen flash in front of them. A term I love is brain rot. The opposite of being overstimulated is being understimulated. So things like meditation, breath work, sitting and staring at a wall. I know that sounds crazy and painful, but I had to ask myself, why is that painful? Why can't I just be okay with myself? Why do I have to cram every spare minute before I'm waiting for an improv class to start with more social media content? Do you wanna go hardcore mode on this? I use something called Brick. And this is a product I haven't seen anyone talk about, but I absolutely love this thing. I'll link it down below. It's inexpensive for what it does and the amount of time you get back. Uh, this was money well spent. So pretty much how it works, you have to tap your phone on this thing. 
to unlock all the fun apps on your phone. So now you're not relying on willpower. Now you're not relying on discipline. You physically cannot do it until you tap it again and unlock your phone. So doing what you can to reclaim your mental headspace is this habit. I want to share something personal I've never shared in videos, and I haven't been ready to talk about it for the longest time, but I think it's a good time and it fits here. I have my own struggles with faith. I was raised Christian, and I didn't agree a lot with what was taught in the church. Um, I had issues with theology, and it pushed me away from God and religion altogether. And so in my 20s, I got into spirituality, new age. And at the start, it was amazing. There were no rules. You could kind of pick and choose what you wanted to believe, what sounded good, what felt true. But the deeper I got into spirituality, I was left with this emptiness that it was extremely isolating and it felt very selfish. Uh, I don't mean selfish as in, you know, you're a jerk to people and you're hoarding resources. I mean self-centeredness, that it was all about you. It was the universe wants to manifest through you. It wants you to have a nice car. It wants you to have millions of dollars. And then I saw people deeper than I was on the spiritual path, and they seemed way more lost than others. You know, they seemed deeply unhappy behind the scenes when I'd hang out with them at Masterminds, or their life and family was a wreck, or they didn't have a family and it was extremely isolating. I started to see values in traditional teachings like religion and Christianity, the nuclear family, raising good kids. For the first time in a decade, I started praying. I said, God, use me. God, use me. I didn't know what it meant. I just said it over and over and over again. And I would sit down on my meditation cushion and I would pray to Jesus. And I felt waves of emotions. I started tearing up. I got chills down my spine. I started um, reading. I went out and bought my first Bible in 20 years, started opening it up and reading the Gospels every day. And to be fully honest, I don't know what I'd consider myself. I think I'm still searching, but I'm pursuing a path with spirituality that feels like it's something bigger than me. I don't believe that we're all these 180 pound meat bags walking around for 80 years, ordering Uber Eats, watching football games, drinking beer, and then we die. That's it. I think we're infinite spiritual beings who get a temporary human experience. I'm putting this in here because developing your own faith, going deeper with what you believe, connecting to something bigger than yourself, that I know is a game changer from personal experience and has been the journey I've been on all year. If you want 11 questions to change your life, I'll link down below our email list where it gets sent to you for free. These are my favorite 11 questions for personal growth. Thank you so much for being on this channel. I love you. Subscribe if you're not already. Like this video, it helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Stop settling, start living. See ya.